It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 आज का दिन यहुआ ने बनाया हम उसमें आनंदित हो वट एल्स कैन वी बी हैप्पी एंड रिजॉइस इन इट आज का दिन श्योरली गॉड एज मेड एस एंड वी विजॉइस इन इट मैं वे श्योर वी आर लाइफ and we are going to praise and worship god and i wish this song would have this worship would have gone and we are filled with holy spirit though and i'm sure god is going to going to talk to us and god been talking to us <clears throat> let's bow down our heads for a minute amen praise god hallelujah so to hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus Hallelujah Heavenly Father we want to thank you this wonderful morning time It's your grace that we are here It's your mercy that we are here Talk to us Lord Holy of your spirit Hallelujah Hallelujah Thank you Jesus Give me the word so I can give the word to the people here Lord Hallelujah start We want to commit this word, this message, unto the hand, Lord. Talk to us, pour us your Holy Spirit. We pray in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Again, good to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, I think we have full house. A lot of people are traveling. Maybe <clears throat> we heard one message this morning about functioning of a father, the heavenly father, as well as the earthly father. I always want to go and hear messages from servants of God. The lot of servants of God, we are here. <clears throat> But this morning I want to go ahead and talk um I think I would ask them to go ahead and put uh, my title for the message Setbacks are necessary for comebacks Setbacks are necessary for comebacks Why setbacks happens in our life is it happens for a purpose it happens for some other reasons the one aspect of setbacks i'm going to go down talk here today is from god we can have setbacks because of foolishness stupidity and a couple of other factors but god why god allows setbacks in our life is to come back is to come back to where we are in the foothold of god setbacks can be necessary part of life and help us grow and develop what we sometimes consider or call challenges may be the god's way of moving us from our present struggle to a higher place let's take first samuel verses 9 <clears throat> You all know the story of what's behind that chapter. <clears throat> There's a series of chain of events happening in chapter 8, chapter 9 for setting up the ultimate purpose of fulfilling God's plan. Sometimes in our life though, the chain of events may happen but we don't know why it is happening now but god's ways are different from our ways amen, amen. amen. we see in chapter 8 though samuel has dedicated his kids boys to be the leaders of israel though and you know what happened i don't want i have a little limited time though and they messed up totally and people came back and said we don't want to have this boys as our leaders to give us a king and th- that goes into chapter 9 and chapter 9 there's another problem developing though and you know what what's developing in there kish lost some of his donkeys and uh, they don't know what to do when livelihood is at stake though you will take extreme condition extreme measures to going to resolve that issue kish asked his son soul and servant 
to go ahead and go find donkeys. And whenever someone loses the livelihood, their lives is at stake. That may be their business. They use those donkeys as transportation of goods. Not only that, they use us in the farming too. That, that, that product, our donkeys were very important for their lives. Sometimes we may lose certain things in our lives and God want to teach something for us. They took off the journey though with a servant. <clears throat> they could be wrong. They could be some, somewhere else. <clears throat> Probably after days of going here or there, finding donkeys, they couldn't be able to find. That's, uh, out of all the exhaustion that they had, walking different mountains, different ways, the servant said, okay, let's go ahead and find somebody. There's a person here though, who can tell us. There's a servant of God, let's go in and see him. It was seemingly simple suggestion that led them in God divine intervention though. There must have been possibility of that. They must, they must be talking, let's go. We had enough of finding people though, or finding donkeys. Let's go back. They didn't do it. <clears throat> All may seem to be coincidence happening in our life. God is always behind the scene. God is always behind the scene though. Making sure that he works everything together for good to them that love him. Two examples though, or two things what we can learn here is, learn to obey and take simple instructions. It, it is instructing to know that Saul obeyed his father Samuel and even hone his servant to seek the advice of a servant of God. <clears throat> Second, seek God's face. In times of trouble, in times of setback. When we face with a crisis of any kind, it is wise and important for us to seek the face of God. Two things. At the end of the day, you never can tell what, is God, what God is up to behind the scene in our lives. But God, God usually takes us to unusual places to fulfill his purpose and his plan. And we don't understand that. But th this morning, Holy Spirit wants to tell, seek God's face. Learn to obey and take instructions. <clears throat> What we call a crisis or problem may be just a God divine intervention or arrangement or setting us up for his ultimate purpose. God works the same way. Many times we wonder why he would let us go through such bad and difficult times. <clears throat> but God knows that when he puts these things all in order, they always works for good. Amen? We just have to trust him, and eventually they will all make wonderful. God takes a mistake and turn them around and bring good out of it. Trusting the God, past to the God's mercy, the present to God's love, and future to God's providence. Whenever this thing happens to our life, though, we need to trust him. Setbacks can happen in our lives. <clears throat> One of the key examples I was reading, one of the autobiographies of Abraham Lincoln, though I don't know, probably you may have all read. He became orphaned though at the age of seven. His dad was there, his mother died. He was army in the captain. He got stripped of the captaincy. He was regularly working in the army though. Then his girlfriend died, then his 
wife died, his three kids died, and during the Civil War, he came very close to the God, very close to God. And I strongly believe that God has an ultimate purpose for his life. That's why it's set up happening back to back, back to back, back to back. Then he fought the Senate election, he lost a couple of times. Then he took small jobs and <clears throat> he failed that also. Finally, he became the president of the United States. But not, that's not God want him to go and do. The ultimate purpose of God's purpose in Abraham Lincoln's life is to create something one of the finest pieces of legislation God has enacted through Abraham Lincoln was Emancipation Proclamation and 13th Amendment. You know what that is. Freeing of slaves. I compare that with Moses, the freeing Israelites from Egypt. You know, probably we may not understand the seriousness of that piece of legislation in the United States, though. Black Americans got freed, north, south, west, east, everywhere, from the bondage of slavery, though. God has an ultimate purpose for each and every one of us, our lives. Trials are designed to teach us so that our conduct and our character changes. There is one thing we need to gonna get it straight today and our thinking today. Our trials do not destroy us, but our responses to them can. How do we respond to crisis? Are we a good crisis manager or crisis? How do we handle crisis management? God teaches us through hard ways. If you look into the example of Moses, the anger management took almost 40 years in wilderness. God took Moses 40 years to fulfill his plan. Our choices can posit positively affect us simply by understanding some basic principle why God permits pressures and problems to come into our lives. At the time we are going through a trial, we may know what God's specific reasons for it but we can know generally why God has permitted the situation in your life. The second slide, please. <clears throat> Third slide. <clears throat> what are the God's purpose in our setbacks? There got to be some kind of a purpose in God's setbacks in our life. We read um, Genesis 15, 19 to 21. Joseph was a part of God's plan and took almost 13 years for God to prepare him to gonna fulfill his final plan though in him. We see there in Joseph's life, the aim of God's providence seems to be complex for Joseph, but not for God, not for God. We think that our problem, when it comes, what a complex problem, what a complex situations that we are into. You know, his entire problem started with a simple dream, a simple dream. And you know what happened, though, from dream to pit, pit to slavery, and then slavery to prison. And from prison to the top prime minister of Egypt. Though. See the setbacks happening in his life. Was God not aware of his setbacks? God put up deliberately the setbacks to prepare him for one of the one of the plans that he had for Joseph. Amen? God will take us to unusual places to train us to carry out his place, 
plants. Unusual places. God, why am I have to gonna go there? Why have to be here so? But God puts us into that situation though. And Joseph knew it very well. We ought to trust in the past to God's mercy, the present to God's love, and the future to God's providence. Amen? One of the principles that I learned in God's purpose is basically, affliction is often God's method of causing us to examine our sin. That's one purpose God wants to have a setback in our life, examine our sin. The second thing, God's purpose in our problems was examine your relationship to God. I don't want to go and read all that. I have only 10 minutes left. Afflictions is often God's mother of causing us to enlighten to a solution. What is the solution? The solution is to seek God. Amen? The solution is to get honest with ourselves and with God concerning our sin. A steadfast trust in God will help us realize that God has a divine plan allowing our afflictions. You know the affliction that God uh, put it on Joseph, though. Why he has to go, to go through all the trouble to fulfill a grand plan that God has? Problem requires us to rest in God's promises. That's what God reminds us today, though. Problem re requires us to resort to God in prayer. The problem requires us to rejoice in God's peace. The God's problem in your life that you might be Christ-like. Is, is that right, Stephen? That is the ultimate purpose of God. And one of the things is, that's exactly why God made us in his own image, though. And I was thinking about my image may be different from Pastor Shumukov, a couple of brothers sitting here. Though. What is the reason when it says in Genesis 1.26, God made us in his own image, though? The Holy Spirit revealed to me, though, God wants to talk to you. God want to, God it's an interface or a sink that we can communicate with him every day, every moment, whatever we have problems with. That's why he created us in his own image. He never created animals in his own image. Why we created us in his own image is we are the chosen ones. Amen? If you have a problem, then you can go back to God. Go back to God and communicate with him, interface with him, Talk to him. Jesus is a conduit between God and us. Being made in his own image is simply not a list of divine qualities. It is a journey about discovering the goodness of God, our maker, who humbled himself in order to take the likeness he gave us. Amen. God, from the very beginning of time, wanted to make man in his own image, though. Today, uh, today God's number one purpose in our lives is to make us like Christ. Are we up to the mark? Sometimes if we, if we must be hard to grow. We must be fail to know. We may lose to gain. Some lessons are only learned through pain. Sometimes we, we must suffer lack so we know God's providence. Amen? Next slide, please. Quickly move on. <clears throat> How do we overcome setbacks in our life? We learn what's God's purpose in our life. But what's... How do we overcome God's how do we overcome our setbacks, your setbacks? I have a setback, but how do we overcome that? Let's go to 2 Kings 5, and you know what's happening there.
But number one, God wants, God is the only way. Seek him. Amen? The overcoming your issues, overcoming my issues, setbacks, is to seek him. God uses crisis in our life to wake us up and help us to see what truly matters in life. In 2 Kings, we know it, Naaman had a serious issues in his hand. God has brought a halt in his journey of going a leprosy, the leper, right? <clears throat> this crisis lead him to God of Israel. Sometimes crisis happens to pull back to God. God is what Naaman needs. That is what we need when we have setbacks, crisis in our life. If you look at to him, Naaman, though, he's an army general, though. Not a small guy. Army general. But that's not enough. What we need is not more of wealth, status, or accomplishments. What we need is more of God. To know him, love him, stick close to him. Man? We have everything... We may have everything in our favor, just like Naaman, but one day we will realize that this do not matter. This do not matter at all. What we are seeking today, Naaman needs to know God and be saved. Seek him. And, and you know what happened to Naaman. He and his servant and everybody went to seek the servant of God. <clears throat> the second way of overcoming your setbacks is God's ways is always different from our ways. Submit to him. We need to have a total and 100% submission to him if we want to overcome our setbacks. This was a big challenge for Naaman, though. He's an army general. Who would, who would say an army general to do what? And he kind of was angry, though. The solutions that were provided by God through servant, he was angry. Sometimes we expect instant, uh, instant food, instant coffee, instant everything, and we expect God to work through instant ways. Uh. Why God make it so difficult? It's not difficult, it's just different. God's concern is not about healing them. He wants to see faith in us. <clears throat> he wants to see obedience in us. He wants to see humility in us. Pastor Shubhu talked last week about the humility. I don't want to go over that. He wants to receive the giver, not just the gift. The crisis may be a God's tool to create submission in you. And you learn what it means to obey his will and know your own. Sometimes most of the plans that we design... There is no God in the entire picture, though. Me? Obeying God was not Naaman was expecting, though. When he went there to go and seek, he wasn't expecting. The worst thing for you and for me, we can uh, walk out of God before even we receive healing, though. Naaman didn't do that. Amen? And the third step in overcoming our setbacks is God's ways is faith, trust. Have faith in God. Not only did Naaman receive the physical healing, though, Naaman testified that there is no other God in the world except in Israel. That was his ultimate plan, the God's plan to know about him. And God knows that whenever he goes back, he'll go ahead and testify that too. That was his ultimate purpose, though. And also we see in Paul's life, too. There was a thorn in the flesh, though. Because setback. But when we leave, though, we may have setbacks till we go to grave, though. But God will continue to do his purpose. Fulfill his purpose in us. Paul's life, thorn in the flesh. He asked 
three times. Can you take this flesh out? But what God replied, though, my grace is enough for you, for my power is made in weakness. Can we tell that? For you, my power is made perfect in weakness. Paul then says he's content with his weakness, troubles, and persecution for the sake of Christ. He carried that thorn till he went to the grave, though. Sometimes in our lives, we may carry that thorn till we go to grave, but still God will work in your life, sir. Amen? Today, we may not understand how and where this puzzle is going to fit. But as our puzzles come together, the picture becomes clearer. In your life, my life. We'll understand the bigger picture, though. He got the past, the present, and the future. In the past, he foreknew and predestined us. In the present, he called and he justified us. In future, we are going to be glorified. Amen? God desires for all, he, all who know him to become more like Christ. He uses his word and uses our problems to make us just like Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Praise and worship team can come up. We went through several examples, though, setbacks from God. God problem in our life, why it happens. What are the reasons behind it? This morning, God wants to talk to you. Come back to God. Have the humility of talking with God. He looked at how do we overcome the setbacks in our life? Seek him, trust him. This morning, God wants to talk to you. Come back to his fold. I know that in my life, your life, people sitting here may be having setbacks. People are having crisis, and they take crisis after crisis after crisis, but try to reach out to God to find why that crisis is happening you know, in my life, in your life. I had a couple of crises in my life. I talked to God. God, I had a certain purpose to fulfill in you. You may not like it, just like Naaman, he didn't like it, but God's, let the God's purpose fulfill in your life. Money doesn't matter, circumstances don't matter, though. but what matters is stick with God, trust him, seek him. Amen. 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 May God bless with you with this force. Amen. Amen.